Hello everyone and welcome to another episode. My name is Martino and today I'm really happy to be here to share with you an interview that I did with classical saxophonist Manu Brasso. We talked about all things practicing from how to practice your saxophone better, how to deal with frustration when things are not really going the way you want, how to perform at a higher level and the things that he does in order to prepare for performances, how to measure your progress, everything practicing. Manu has played with major orchestras around Europe and the UK. Last year he opened for Sir Cliff Richards concert at Greenwich Music Time Festival. So he actually knows his stuff when it comes to practicing and performance. <laughs> If you don't know Manu, I'm linking his social media here below and I also recommend you check out his debut album called Solo Dialogue, which he produced last year in the first lockdown and he goes through all the emotions that he felt in that period. Enough of me talking, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so and I really hope the interview gives you fresh ideas on how to, on how to practice better and more efficiently. Enjoy the interview guys and I'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone and welcome to this first interview with a dear friend of mine, an amazing musician. His name is Manu Brasso, a Spanish yeah. classical saxophonist. I am so thrilled that he accepted um, to do this interview. Um, I'm actually quite nervous because I've never done an interview before, but it's just going to be like a, a friendly conversation. So I'm, I'm really, I'm literally glad that Manu is here. Manu, welcome to the London Saxophone School channel. And uh, thank you for being here. Well, Martina, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. It's, um, it's very nice to be in, in your channel. I'm a, 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 a big follower. <laughs> I love your, your tutorials and everything. Um, and thank you very much for having me again. And I'm sure it's going to be, it's going to be good. I hope I'm nervous as well. So I hope <laughs> I, I don't mess it up. <laughs> if we mess it up, we can just edit it, you know, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who don't know Manu, Manu is a classical saxophonist uh, from Utrera in, in Spain. Um, he's um, he's being he's being um, marking we'll say marking his territory. Can I say that um, in the UK, but in Europe and I would say also around the world as as a as a I would say one of the greatest uh, classical saxophonists that I that I know personally. Um, his sound is unique. When I first met Manu, I, I was like, his sound is so beautiful. You know, it's just so, so deep without having to be that annoying classical sound that some, some people have. And he's being um, a guest on, on BBC Three, on Classic FM, on their social media. And, um, you know, he's, if you don't know Manu, you should check out his channel and his recordings and his playing because he's just truly amazing. And um, today, what I want to do is I want to I want to talk with you, Manu, about practicing. So it's 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 going to be all about practicing. How you practice, what what happens when you practice, the motivation that you have be, behind practicing, and 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 all these things. Because I think that um, when people are learning the saxophone, yeah, they're learning how to play this thing, you know. But most of all, it's how to it's learning how to practice. If you don't know how to practice, then you can be spending five hours in a practice room and just and wasting time. Okay, so. Enough talking. Um, Manu, tell me something. Um, what is practice for you? Really weird question, but what is practice for you? Well, uh, firstly, um, I, I wasn't sure what face should I put while you were saying all those nice things about me. It's, Thank it's, you it's very just, much. It's just so true. <laughs> Thank, just so true. You. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, um, well, practice, uh, we, we always um, talk about practice. Uh, I, 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 I think you mean practice just uh, how to practice the instrument, right? Not how to practice performance in general, or you mean every kind of aspect practice, about I would say practice the instrument itself for now, and then, but also uh, we can talk about practicing performance and getting better at performance. But for now, let's just, just to go into sax, saxophone practice. Yeah, for me, um, saxophone practice um, has been for a long time about finding the best quality all the time. So I think one of the mo most important thing that we need to avoid when we are practicing is um, doing a bad, pra bad practice. Mm -hmm. And it's, it sounds obvious, but it's, it's not that easy. I think it's one of the most difficult things. So when you, um, for example, when you're practicing something, um, if you are practicing in the wrong way, just um, playing wrong notes, 
playing wrong rhythms uh, with the wrong sound or notes out of tune or some, something like that. Um, you are learning those things, all those things. So uh, practicing for me is how to learn something in the good way from the very beginning. And what do you need to do, uh, you need to do in order to, to get to that point in which you are um, avoiding all those little things that we all have, uh, especially when you are starting to read a new piece or, or practicing a scale or doing something, especially something new or something different. Um, it, it's very, very difficult to, to avoid all those things. Um, then focusing on doing everything right from the beginning, that's for me uh, is the way of, of that, that's what is practice for me, how I learn things. I, I, I try to learn everything well, and then everything develops um, following the, the, good, the good path always. Yeah, and the, let's say you're, you're learning a new piece that you've never seen before ever. How do you approach? How do you approach practicing a, a new piece? So, um, in the same way that that I approach uh, in practice, uh, so uh, I try. If I want to avoid these mistakes, what I try to do is starting slowly. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Um, starting slowly from the very beginning, so uh, you have time to react to all the information you have in the piece. And um, if you start faster than 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 you are able to read to react you are you're learning these mistakes so um the first thing is reading um slowly practicing really slowly and listening to the pitch to the piece a lot okay so um i i tend to listen uh, to the piece but i think i should do it more because when i when i really do it when i'm listening all the time to the piece when i when i go for a walk uh, and i put the new piece I, in a loop uh 10 times yeah. and then i learn the, all these new things, different versions. Um, it's really important to different to listen to different versions, and I, you learn all. Well, you le learn everything from from listening, right? And then you can reproduce in your own style, in your own way. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. I I remember when I was um, when I was practicing classical. You know, I, I did classical for for a long time. I I remember that sometimes I even I realized that I even. Uh, I wasn't even listening to the piece. I, I just had yeah. my score and I was like, okay, let's do this. But I had no idea how that sounded. And, uh, and, and, and yeah, and I think that's, that's, that's really wrong. You know, it does that, that, that is so common that, that is, we, we all, we all, um, all, all did it or we will do it at some point. Um, I think is a, it should be the other way around, right? When you learn a new language, yeah. um, uh, you you need to listen in order to um, reproduce those sounds, those words, those ideas, and it's the same with with the new pieces. Um, I have done it as well. I remember um, when I was in the uh, profession we call it professional conservatoire in Spain mm -hmm. when I was 13, 14, um, uh, arriving to the to the first uh, lesson or the first uh, meeting with the pianist that I, that I had at that time, and I was like, okay. Play it to me so I can listen to the piano part. Yeah. Uh, I should know that from, from before very, very well. It's part of the music. You're just exactly. one part of, of the whole piece, right? It's not about exactly. just the saxophone line. Exactly. So, you know, it's, um, you know, I think there's a lot of division between classical and, and jazz, um, especially in, in colleges and, and stuff. But the, the reason why I started the Dono Saxophone School is it was, uh, try to bring people together from different styles. So, um, and what you're saying, it applies to jazz and applies to anything. You know, if if you start from from the score, or if you try to learn a piece, a classical piece from the score, or if you try to learn jazz from the score, it doesn't work. I mean, so the most important thing is is the ears. You know, because once you absorb the piece from here, it goes into here, and then it goes into yeah. a deep hidden place in your brain and then you're able to reproduce it better so um i like that what, what you're saying because you know people in, in in classical world especially they tend to sorry guys but they <laughs> they tend to forget about listening um if we compared classical people to to jazz players but yeah. i don't want to get in, in into that but you know no no i think i think i think you're right and it's very interesting <laughs> that uh, because uh, classical music in in theory, or the first thing you see is that it's more based on on the on the music that is written, yeah. right? And it does 
it, it what what is lo it looks like the important thing of of classical music. But then um, that happens, for example, um, for me as a classical musician, when I listen to other kind of styles or when I see other kind of um, musicians of pop, rock, jazz, uh, it doesn't matter. It's everything is more. Um, at least not at a top level, because at that very top level, all the classical musicians, of yeah. course, they they listen as much or, or of course than, it, than the other styles. Um, but it's always more based on listening than the other styles, than classical music, and that that is something that um, me personally, I, I have been practicing a lot. That just to try to reproduce sound sounds like um, jazz players do. Just uh, like you did in your last video, transcribing a very, big, very big, very difficult tune by by ear. That's so difficult, and, and so, uh, so many classical musicians. When you say, "Can you play this?" and they are like, "Oh, I, I need, a, yeah. I need the score." Yeah. And it's like, oh, even if you are playing like da da di da da, I need the score. I'm like, "Oh my God, you have ears <laughs> as well." Exactly. So you can. Exactly. So th that's that's why I think. Um, we need to learn from from other other styles and, and other kind of musicians, especially at um, early stages in 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 classical music development of um, of or of different performers. But um, but yeah, that's something that's something we are lacking a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but um, listening. So tell me something. What happens in what happens in your brain? Um, when you're practicing and um, let's say you, you, you pra you've been practicing for a while and what goes in, wh what goes in your brain and in, a, in order to tell you, yes, um, I'm, on a, I'm, I'm, on a, I'm on a good path, I'm, I'm, I'm progressing, I'm going somewhere or you go like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm just going to keep trying. So how do you measure your progress on, let's say, on this new piece that you've been doing? Make sense, mm. kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, that's um, it's a good, very good question. Um, so measuring progress is is difficult, especially when you are in the progress uh, or in the in the process of progressing, right? So uh, you don't see. It's like when when you um, you see a friend every single day and you don't notice any changes in uh, in in them, but if you if you go out for a month go go abroad or something and um, and then when you come back it's like oh your hair is longer or or you're a little bit slimmer or fatter or something like that exactly. so um you notice all those little details that you don't notice when you are in the process of of processing i don't know if that that's possible to say <laughs> like that but um so i think for me one one of the things that helped me um i think Probably the thing that helped me the most was uh, when I started to do videos for for Instagram. Mm -hmm. Is when I when I started filming and recording myself almost every day. And then um, when you are in the in so into the the practice of a piece, uh, when you are practicing it a lot and you have everything, all the concepts and all the sounds and everything that you want to make so fresh and so clear. You listen to it in a recording, and you usually don't like it because you know all the all the different possibilities that you have, and it's like, oh, once I did this better, um, so maybe I should do this in a different way. But when you when you um, step <laughs> away from that recording, and um, after a week or two weeks or a month, and you see that that recording again of a piece that you were that you were playing at some point, um. For me, I I don't remember all those little feelings, all those all those little thoughts of okay, I should do this or I wanted to do this but I couldn't, uh, and then I I you just see the bigger picture yeah. of how how you were sounding and what um what were you, uh, you trying to make at that at that time. Yeah. yeah. So um comparing that uh, recording or that video to other videos or other recordings or of other times or, or or comparing them to the um idea that you had or or, or the memories that you had of other videos or, or other times that in which you played different pieces is when you really feel oh i'm doing something well here or i'm doing something wrong um so i think recording and, and videos are the most important thing to keep tracks of, yeah. of your of your process I think you said something really cool. Give me a sec. 
<coughs> sorry guys <laughs> um <laughs> you you said the general picture you know that's i think that's an amazing thing to as an advice to people you know to young players to anyone anyone learning not only the saxophone but any instrument you know uh you're also learning how to um how to how to see the general picture you know because a lot of the people think that they have to get everything right um maybe in a session or in a lesson you know but but it's impossible you know i i say like it's it's like harvesting if you harvest well then in a few months you will get the fruits you know yeah. but the idea is also you need to learn how to how to uh yeah how to see the general picture so eventually you go like yeah okay this is this is okay i've done uh, i've done what i can you go forward and then eventually go like oh, wow and then you look back and realize that actually you you put effort okay so that's yeah i like that i like that <laughs> <laughs> no, i think i think you're right um um it's it's always about um it's the same that when when i i tell my students to listen to themselves um it's so yeah. difficult to not be focused on what is happening right now in your mouth in your what you're listening here and to have a feeling of the room have a feeling of your sound from um outside kind of yeah it's the same when you're um listening to yourself you need to not be uh, in your own um, body for a second yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. for a second and listening to yourself like okay what is this guy doing well or doing wrong or um what could we improve what what is um, happening here yeah. in general I think. and what about what happens is let's say you've been playing this new piece for for a while it's so, something really hard i don't know like carmen or 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 something and uh, we always have those those moments in which no matter what happens the things are not are not happening you know maybe it's a very hard thing a uh, very fast passage or your sound is not clear or whatever you go like what i don't know i don't, I don't know what else to do um how do you deal with that like frustration of of being there of practicing like crazy and 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 having no results you you mean in the in the in a performance for example no no more in more in the practice session so okay. let's say you've been doing something for for a long time but you're not really there yet as as you wished you were how what do you do there so um when that happened um it's been many, many, well, I would say every single time I, I pick up a new piece, I, I find a part or maybe the whole piece, well, not the whole piece because uh, that would be trickier, but uh, if you have a, a passage or, or a movement or something in which you don't you don't feel like, um, you don't know what to do, you don't know exactly how to, how to play it in a way, even if you're playing the right notes, right rhythms in the right style, everything right or correct. Because you've tried everything, there is, yeah. Yeah, there is nothing happening apart from that. Um, when I don't feel comfortable uh, 100% with um, one of those passages, for example, what I do is I try to take them to the extreme. So mm -hmm. I, 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 if let's say I'm playing, um, can I give you an example? For example, of course, yeah, yeah. Please. So <laughs> now, you, now you said Carmen. Uh huh. And I, I haven't played Carmen for a while, but for example, um, if I'm doing this passage of the, um, one of the variations of the theme is. Imagine you have practiced that, sorry, because I read, I haven't played in like five hours, <laughs> but imagine, um, imagine you're practicing that um, and you don't find any musical sense to that or you don't feel comfortable you don't um you you, you cannot try anything else or you feel like you cannot try anything else yeah, that, yeah. And to make it work exactly. so what i would do i will try um for example the one of the extreme will be to stop in the melody a lot um so stop in every note of the melody um much more than i would do normally okay so that's one of the streams for example <laughs> something like that and then the the opposite i will stop in the other two notes of every uh -huh. three I... ah, it's difficult but i will try yeah, different yeah. things or or <laughs> take it very piano very rubato 
very um, really really a tempo. Um, when you try all those different possibilities, you extend the range of things that can happen to this, and then you can choose from from that point or even uh, at the moment uh, the, of the performance or, or when you are recording yourself, yourself um, because different things can happen. You have all these tools ready to be used. So if at some point you need to breathe here, you have, um, you have practiced a, a path or a way of playing Carmen in which you were stopping here. So you have the more tools, the more you experiment with them, with the tunes or, and with the, with the pieces. Exactly. So, sorry. Beautiful, um, and that's that's what I that's what I say to students as well. I think I mean it, I think it's a common thing upon, among all musicians. You know, you try yeah. to if something is not happening and it's, you've tried everything you can, you still try to make things harder than what they are. So yeah. when, when you go back to play the normal way, you go like, oh, "This is so easy. I've done it so ten times harder than this." So uh, I think that's super important because people think that they have to play the way that it is for whatever, you know, for 10 hours or 10,000 hours, and then they'll be fine. <laughs> but you have to, you know, you have to go deeper into the, into, into the music. So see, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything's connected, I think, in a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, um, um, uh, for example, about experimentation uh, and about taking everything to pushing the, the boundaries of, of uh -huh. every single thing while practicing. I think that's, one of the most important things. For example, um, I always tell my, my students as well, and I do it for myself, um, if you don't feel comfortable with the sound, um, push it to the limit in which you think, you feel that you're doing too much, and then go the other way around, step back and, and do less than you need. And then you will find that middle point in which you feel comfortable. Yeah. And maybe one day is here, one day is here, one day is here, but it depends on if you don't try, if you don't, um, go through all those different paths of, yeah. of playing. You cannot. You cannot know. It's impossible exactly. to know. Exactly. So, so it's so like experimentation. Uh, ex experimentation. Exactly. You know. So um, yeah, when people are learning, they need to remember that they're learning how to play saxophone, but, but learning how to practice, and they just have to experiment. You know, like everyone experiments. You, me, uh, Sonny Rollins, Marcel Mule. You know, like. If you don't experiment, then you you never know what's gonna work. And and then of course, yeah. the more you grow, the more you learn, the more you go like, okay, if I go this way, I know what's gonna happen. If I go this way, I know what's what's gonna happen. Um, I, I was uh, there is something very interesting about this experimentation, and is that um, I was listening. Um, is that you can apply it to every field, and it, yeah. it works in the same way. And I was listening to a podcast um, in which the the creator the founder of Netflix uh -huh. was talking and, uh, and what he was uh, talking about um, uh, performance and how to improve um, and ideas and things like that. And he was saying that um, when I was young, I thought that um, some of the ideas that I had were, um, were how was it? Well, the, 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 the last mm -hmm. thought was that when he was older, when um, he was more mature, he realized that there were no such thing as a good idea. Yeah. So all the ideas were bad, but you had to try them in order to experiment with them and to develop them into, into a good idea. Exactly. If you don't have ideas that are good or bad, um, well, in this case, most of them will be bad, right? If you are trying something very loud or very... Um, very slow or very rubato, very free or very um, tight, it will be a bad idea in the beginning, but then you have that tool to use it and to develop it and develop it as a good idea, I think. Exactly. And it's like composing or, uh, yeah, I, I was reading that Beethoven wrote a lot of crap, a lot of bad music, you know, of course, but, then, yeah. but then he was so genius to develop the good, the whatever he liked into the, <laughs> into you know the amazing music that he that he produced yeah. and, and Bach and all, all those people you know um, I want to ask you two two things do you have a a practice notebook no I don't I don't I, I I've tried a few times but I'm very disorganized and it's it's impossible for me to keep track I do it one week and then I forget the week after and, and then it doesn't make sense anymore nice. so 
So I think I think it's very important. Um, the good thing is that they have a very good memory, <laughs> and I remember I remember things when I was practicing them. I remember what I thought of each passage yeah. most of the time, but um, I would remember much more things if I had them <laughs> written down in a notebook. But I I recommend it to my students because it's it's um even if, not a not a, a notebook but a, a video. Like a folder with your videos or your yeah. audios, yeah. in which you you see yourself progressing. What like we talked before, um, but I I would love to be organized enough to have a notebook. To, you know, to, I, I, to keep track. I know yeah. you. I know you are. I know you are. But it's a, it's a new thing. Um, when I was growing up, and I I was the same. You know, I didn't have a notebook or anything. But since since knowing Benny Greb, the drummer, uh, you know, I took a course with him last last year. He's really into you know practicing with a with a into yeah into, into a practice journal and to keep track of everything you're doing. And I wrote I, I read his book uh, Effective Practicing for Musicians, which I'm gonna link to you, and I'm gonna also look link here in the description, which is an amazing book for anyone, not only music I think, but in in any field. It's basically how to keep track of. It's not how to keep track. It's how to practice more efficiently in a more yeah. scientific way, you know. Um, but everything comes from from what you like, you know. Everything comes from that. You have to read the book. It's, it's just amazing. So I've been I've, since you know getting to 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 know him. I was like, man, I'm gonna gonna try this. And uh, but one of the cool things that I that I learned from 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 Benny is that if you have say you had to learn a piece and you have three months to do it, four months, whatever, you know. Um, he says, do a recording today of you trying to, to play the piece yeah. at 120 BPM or whatever it is. So you try today, at the, uh, try to, to play it as it should be in four months, you know, and it's going to be horrible. Go like, oh, I cannot play this thing. And then you practice and practice and practice. And when you feel down and sad, go like, okay, let me see how it was. Boom. Oh, oh my God, I'm actually improving, you know. Um, so that's something that I really liked. But anyway, it's just a little thing. <laughs> no, no, that, it's really important it's, to have a um, positive psychology while while practicing. Exactly, because it's really, really important. Yeah, because it's if you don't see the progress, you know, even people like masters who who can really really play, um, you you need to see where you're where you're going. And the mind sometimes is a little, you know, it, it pays tricks to us. So it's really easy to. To be really happy and then suddenly come down because of some, yeah. you know because something's not working on or whatever um and i so uh, about this I, I for example i have shared um uh, my during my studies my my undergrad studies and um, my master's studies here in london i have i have shared um class and um um practicing sessions and performance sessions with um a lot of tremendously like amazingly good musicians and um, and I can see uh, that the difference, like ninety five percent of the difference, mm -hmm. is um, in how they practice. Like the difference between the, it's not about talent, it's not about all those things. It's about practicing well and practice and finding the ways of of being positive about your practice. Yeah. About um, if this doesn't work, try something else. If 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 you don't find comfortable with something else, maybe record yourself and look at, at your um, how you were playing it a few months ago. Yeah. Things like that that makes is what makes the difference. Improving a hundred percent, I think. Yeah, it's 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 amazing, and it's it makes you think less also, I think, and and concentrate more on the actual you know action of of, of making it better, I think, because. Um, yeah, because you keep trying. It's more like, like a, you know, I, I think I see it as a, as a scientist going to the lab and then recollecting data of whatever they're doing, you know, and then they then they can track it and go like, yeah, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. It's a very scientific approach. It's not music. We're, yeah. like, we're musicians. We're not, you know, but everything's connected, I think, in a way. And if we learn, to, if we learn to do as many things as we can and have different mindsets and, and stuff, so then we become we become better, I think. Let I me agree. Ask, <laughs> let me ask you one more thing. How you you perform a lot? You've been you you you've performed to to thousands and thousands of of, of people on on big stages. You know, if you've opened for um, Surf Cliff Richard and 
and, and other big names and stuff. And um, how do you become good at performance? How do you practice performance if you, if you do that? Um, yeah, I'm just really curious to, to know your, your thoughts you know, behind performance, which is a big, huge thing. So um, sometimes we forget about uh, about this, right? We we think that we are just practicing for ourselves, and and, and that is the case. In in some cases, some people yeah. just want to play for themselves. But in general, we perform for someone, right? Or, exactly. or for even for yourself is performing for someone, and that's why when you put a camera in front of you, you yeah. feel so nervous at times. It's like even worse than than, than yeah. performing for. For, for your friend or something. So um, I used to, there is something very interesting about this and is that I used to be really, to feel really, really anxious performing okay. when I was wow. younger. Um, and I worked because um, I worked a lot, uh, really a lot and I did a lot of research and I even did my undergraduate, um, how do you call that, the, the final dissertation? Yeah, yeah. Um, I did my undergraduate um, final dissertation in performance psychology. Oh wow! Yes, in order to know a, a little bit more about my my performance anxiety. Um, my teacher, for example, in in Seville, when I where I studied my undergrad, um, he knew a lot about it, um, kind of in a natural way, an intuitive yeah. way. He did yeah. the numbers and the, and the research, but. Um, he was saying, when you when you are playing with me here, um, you you perform at the ninety ten hundred percent, and then you go in the, in a stage, and you're performing at a 50, yeah. 60 of, mm -hmm. of my total potential. So that's a very very big um, decrease in in potential, right? In in sound in in, in quality, and what what I want to I, I want to say is that it can be trained. You can yeah. be tra trained trained by yourself or by getting help from people, reading books, mm, watching other performs and, and asking yourself questions or other people questions about how to, how do you need to feel yourself to feel good in the stage? How do you need to, um, much more important, how do you need to practice yeah. in order to, to feel good in the stage? Um, I used to practice, for example, uh, I used to do a lot of mental practice, okay. imagining the room in which I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, about the practice. Um, I remember, for example, for the auditions at the Royal College, yeah. uh, I was feeling very, very nervous um, before. But I remember I was playing Tomasi Concerto, the first yeah. movement. Um, I was staying with my with my cousin, uh, who at that time lived lived in London, and I stayed for a couple of days before the audition. And I remember going through the first movement of, of Tomasi uh, Saxophone Concerto maybe five times five times just standing standing still in her room <laughs> on my own with the eyes closed imagining okay uh, i i didn't know the room in which i performing i was performing but i was imagining me getting into a room yeah yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Performing throughout the whole piece having a nice feeling speaking to the panel nicely um and then i just played once before the the audition yeah I just played uh, through once. It was very, very good. Um, and I was like, okay, I don't want to play anymore. I don't want to get tired and I don't yeah. want to um, erase the, yeah. this tight feeling uh, as well, psychological feeling. So um, that uh, th then the audition went very, very well as I had imagined. And it's like this give you this kind of practice uh, of the actual performance, give you the freedom of going through the performance feeling is not exactly the same of course but um it's 100 maybe 80 yeah. 90 percent the same yeah. so it, it gives you the 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 chance to to experiment with that as many times as you want yeah yeah yeah. Uh, it's visual and that, yeah that's what i do too it's yeah you, i think if you visualize of course the more details you know about the the place you perform if you know the stage if you know the the, the church or whatever you know um even better but if you don't it's it's fine you go through the piece but the cool thing is that you get the the emotions coming up as soon as yeah. you as you visualize the thing the, the the concert the performance so you start to go like oh my god yeah there's so many people or there's the examiners or whatever you know so if you do that few times i mean many times over a, a long period of time that 
anxiety is just going to come down because you're going to be able to control it. So when the actual day comes, you go like, oh, yeah, I know this feeling. Yeah, I feel I know. That before. Yeah. But I, and, I, I, and then you can give it. Yeah, and you have practiced that feeling or how exactly. to control or how to use that good, that uh, bad excitement into turn it into good excitement. Think, things like that you have practiced, um, you might have practiced it a thousand times in a risk-free environment exactly. on, your, or, on your own, in a room. In your mind, even. In your mind, yeah. Exactly. So, so that, that's really, really important. And that, that kind of mental practice is what breaks the, um, the barrier of feeling not comfortable to feeling comfortable on the stage. Um, for example, I now I don't do it that much, maybe because I feel yeah. much more comfortable after yeah. performing so much. And um, But I remember, especially when I arrived to London, I was performing a lot in the beginning. First or second year I did, I gave like 40 concerts in one year, things yeah. like that. Um, and, um, small concerts, big concerts, it, yeah. it didn't matter. But to prepare to those concerts, I were I was in the tube all the time, all the time, thinking, going through the pieces, like, yeah, all the time. And um, it was I learned a lot from that. I I learned it was like playing um four thousand instead of forty concerts in a year. Exactly. So that that experience um multiplies for. Um, 10, 10 times instead of just having one one experience exactly and that's how you practice at least how i practice performance um and reading all, all there there's there is a lot of books um with good very good research okay um about how to what do you need to think while you are um performing um how to overcome some situations and things like that and it's so interesting it's so interesting but I mean, everything can be trained Thing. exactly everything can be trained i like that <laughs> i and uh, so people if you're if you have performance anxiety or just don't like performing don't say you don't like it just just try it visualize it you know experiment with more things you know and then and then you decide what to do but you know and then for those of you who don't have have not seen manu play live i've, I've seen you play live i don't a few times now many times, many times. <laughs> yeah. he's the most relaxed person ever I'm like, well, I, I look like that. I look like that, but uh, it's not like that inside. He, he it's, looks it's, so relaxed. You look so relaxed. It's crazy. And he's playing all these crazy things, and then altissimo, and then down and up and down. And then, so, yeah. There is there is always always tension and always um, excitement and always uh, nerves inside. If not, I, I don't think. Um, I don't think. I don't think we will have any good positive feedback if we didn't have this kind of um, what yeah, is going to happen. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, uh, so there is always nerves. And, but I, I try, the more you try to uh, look relaxed as well, it makes you feel relaxed. Yeah. Even if, if, if you are forcing it, like, okay, I have to be relaxed. I have to do Then in the end, you, you, you will tend to, to follow the, the, the mood. Yeah. Manu, thank you so much. I think... I think that's it. If we sum it up for 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 the people here, for for our um, followers, so um, we've talked about practicing um, what to do, what to do when you when you practice. How uh, remember to have the general picture. You know, have to have mm -hmm. the general picture. Don't get too detail into details. I mean, do because you you need to do that. But also remember that it's it's a process. You had you need to harvest and you will get the results later. Don't expect like that. You know, don't expect immediate results. Uh, if you do things well, then the results will come. Um, we talked about performance a lot around. You have to visualize this, the the performance. You know, have to you have to know what the stage as many details as possible and. Um, uh, because anything can be trained, you say, you said, uh, and I, and I and I love that. And what else did we talk about? And um, remind me, I should have, talked um, about, but it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I, I said I had a good a good memory. Now I don't. <laughs> you don't have no, a don't. you don't have a practice journal, but keeping track of of your practice is is good, whether with video or <laughs> audio recording or or. or or a notebook if you have it, not in your case, but you know, uh, you have to try. Keep it track. Yeah. Keep it track. Yeah. And I think the most, the, the, the most 
important thing that we can uh, take out from here is, is having the general idea, experimenting, and that everything can be trained. That's mm. super good, you know? So any, anyone who's, who's listening, who's watching, whether, whether you're eight, 18, uh, 28, doesn't, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter which level you're at. I think, you know, if you have the general picture and you experiment and you slowly, you will find, you know, like a snake follow slowly, you will find your path and you will know where to go essentially. Um, I, I would say two, two more things. If I had to give some advice, for example, to yeah. young, uh, young players, um, I would say, well, I, I, something that they have said, I have been told thousands of times, but of course, when you are young, you don't listen all the time. Um, and I yeah. think that is the most important thing um, is to listen to yourself. That, that has to be, uh, it's very related to with um, um, seeing the bigger picture. Yeah. So listening to yourself is something that we, we need to force ourselves to do because we don't do it naturally. Exactly. So it's, it's one of the main things when you are, especially when you are practicing, um, in order to have a good practice session. Um, and then the other thing is um, to practice slowly. Yeah, practice. Which we talked about <laughs> at the beginning. I remember now, practice is slowly and listening to the piece you know, so it gets That's absorbed. Good point. Practice <laughs> slowly is the, is the only way of being able to play anything you want, really, anything. Yeah, so yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> practice slowly, general picture, experimenting and anything can be trained. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Beautiful. It's good. Yeah. Manu. It works. Yeah. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much. Guys, you should check Manu Brasso out. His, his YouTube channel, you can, you can find him on Instagram as well. He's posting so many things every day. Um, he's just launched a, a Patreon page. Um, he's got a CD that we, we didn't have the chance to talk about, but you should check his uh, solo dialogue on Spotify, which is amazing. He just produced it um, uh, in the first lockdown last, last year in March. And um, it's, yeah, check him out. He's, he's a, an, awesome, an awesome person, an awesome musician, uh, beautiful sax player. Um, I mean, great sax player. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, Manu, thank you so much. Well, Martina, thank you. Thank you very much. I, um, I really appreciate that you take your your time to for to for to do the, this interview um i really appreciate everything you do and i think you do everything with a very good heart thank and you work you. a lot on all your all your stuff is is really well done so um, keep keep doing it yeah you too thank you very much <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you and uh See you guys soon and uh, with more interviews, I hope, with, with different players. I've, we've, I've got a list of, of really interesting players that I want to interview. So this is the first and I'm really honored to have Manu here. And uh, that's it. So take care, guys, and uh, we'll, see you. we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.